Tomato is a vegetable of the Solenesi family locally known as Enyanya in Luganda. The vegetable is one of the most popular vegetable grown. It is one of the easiest crops to plant if you are growing for home consumption and not commercial. Simply squeeze some seeds from your ripe tomato onto your home garden and voila! You have the next tomato to make you a delicious meal or salad. Call it kachumbali. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. As you can see in my garden, they are stick, the ones that I put on strings. So the advantage of uh, steak tomatoes over the ones that are mulch is in quality. You see that these ones have a better quality. Sandra Navasirie, 27 years. Young, inspiring female earning from tomato farming from the comfort of her home. From half an acre of land in the nearly urban setting of Nabingo in Wakiso, Sandra has decided to spare some space to engage in vegetable farming, including green paper, but majorly tomatoes to beat the income gap in her household. Holding a bachelor's degree in education from Macquarie University, Sandra is satisfied trading it for agriculture. I came into farming. Uh, it was a challenge that I was facing in my area, accessing vegetables, because as you can see around, we have no markets. So at first I thought, let me grow a few plants for my, my, my household. Then after a day, I was like, I think I can also sell to my neighbors. After really thinking about it, I was like, no, I think I can really do this. I can sell because maybe I, we have so many demands. I have the demands by my neighbors, so I can sell and I give to markets in my area. That's when I, that's when I developed the passion and the love for joining agriculture. But first it was because I wanted to grow things for my household and uh, I got, uh, because I had no knowledge about agriculture, I knew what I wanted to grow, I knew I wanted to grow tomatoes, but I had no knowledge. First thing I did was to seek knowledge. To start up a tomato farming project, you may need to begin with as low as a million shillings if you have your own piece of land. This will cater for seedlings costing at 40,000 shillings per sachet, manure costing at 10,000 shillings per bag, organic fertilizers, poles at 1,000 shillings each. Have a good water source. Tomatoes need watering at least twice a day during the dry season. For half an acre, you need about, uh, with us when, it's, when you're staking, or let's say roughly, I need on about two millions only. When you're not going to, uh, to, to, to stake strings and stuff, it can be about one million. Because this is also expensive, buying the trees, rather the poles, the binding wire and the strings and all that. So let's say roughly about two, 2.5 when you're staking. But still I would encourage farmers to go for this method of staking. You'll get good quality tomatoes. When you don't have the knowledge, you end up spending even four millions. Because people tell you, you go to different shops, uh, you buy this, this fungicide, buy this pesticide. You buy about three different brands but doing serving the same purpose. So you need, the, the much money that you have, the less money that you're going to spend. Have land, and for my, because my, my fellow young women might say, for us we don't have land, until we are in Kampala, until we are renting, I tell you what. Land should not be a limitation. You can even hire land. What is important is the passion you have and the commitment. You hire, you go and hire, then you start farming. You don't need to go to the villages. Even in town, I'm in town, but I'm getting money from here. It costed 42,000 a circuit, 10 grams, by about three circuits. There's 126,000, three circuits. Yeah. Then the manure, you don't even have to spend a lot of money. You can talk because your son area talk because me I used to talk to my neighbors who rear chicken because on market a sack of uh, chicken droppings costed about 10,000 but me I got at 7,006 a full sack so 
this, and you, you don't have to invest like I have met him two million. Let me just invest. You have to invest wisely because time is going to reach when these fruit, these plants are fruiting. They are they need chemicals. And you don't have money, and from that two million, let me say for half an acre, first save outside about five five hundred or four hundred for emergencies before you start harvesting. Some of the tomato varieties grown in Uganda include Money Maker, Bonnie Best, Maglob. Rio Grande, Tengeru, 97, Amateur Rodded, Hayes, New Fortin Maker, F1. My farm is Novella F1. The ones I've researched on is Asila. Then there is DRD. Why Novella, Novella F1? is because uh, it's resistant to bacterial wilt, unlike other varieties. Some, of course, there was, uh, some farmers when they plant, they're affected with that. Like, what you plant about 4,500 plants, when you start flowering, you find that you have about 3,000. Even when you're lucky, you get about 2,000. The rest, when they've wilted. So, I chose Novel because of that. Yeah, even uh, its size is over shaped and uh, the skin is also hard. Yes. Mm. And even it's big in size. Preparing a nursery bed should be a must for this kind of project. The conditions in the nursery and main garden should be conducive with acceptable soil textures and temperatures. Make a square portion of a raised cement for a bed and then make a fine tilt. Incorporate in manure or potting agents like biochar to enhance the nutrients. Broadcast the seeds on the bed and lightly cover with soil. Seedlings are usually ready for transplanting three to four weeks after sowing and they must be transplanted on moist soil. Seed beds should be watered after sowing and it should be done regularly until seedlings reach a height of five to seven centimeters. The soil should be rich in organic matter and plant nutrients with a pH value of 6 to 7. But first of all, you need to have the seeds. Then you need to get the soil. Uh, my, 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 my land, you see as you see, it, it's rocky. It's a lot of so stones. It's not so fertile. So what I did, I, got, I bought soil, the black soil. I bought it, I went, I bought it. Then I, 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 I mixed with manure. I used chicken droppings. Then I mixed and I potted because I used paper, uh, newspapers and I potted the seedlings. So after mixing the, the black soil with the manure, I put in those potted bags. Then I started picking seeds one by one. I put it here at my, 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 my place. I, I started picking seeds one by one. Then I was covering it. Then I, it took uh, three weeks. Usually it takes three weeks before transplanting. But uh, like I told you, I, I, the knowledge I saw, I saw it, they told me you need to take care of the nursery bed if you want good results in the main garden. Then I treated the soil, you have to treat the soil in the nursery bed. When you don't do that, usually they get issues when you transplant them in the main garden, the plants. Tomatoes grow while on the ground. However, as they begin to flower, it is advisable that you stake them. This will prevent them from water and moisture that would otherwise cause them to rot before they are ready for harvest. As you can see in my garden, they are stick, the ones that I put on strings, staked ones, and even the ones that I mulched. So the advantage of uh, staked tomatoes over the ones that are mulched is in quality. You see that these ones have a better quality. Like, they're not affected by, like, see it's rained, I tell they're moist, I tell they're rotting or what. So you get it in the quality is good. So maybe I encourage farmer, I would encourage also tomato farmers those with issues of my tomatoes are rotting from the garden, I take the rain, because usually the rain affects tomatoes. So maybe if you can invest in staking or putting them on strings, the better. But of course, this is a bit costly. Uh, those who can't afford this, at least you mulch, make sure you mulch, you put grass. Fairly well. These are the ones that I, I didn't stake, the ones that I mulched. To when, whenever it rains, eh? Uh, it affects the tomatoes, especially these ones that are down. Eh? The, the, the ground becomes moist, like you can see. And if you don't leave them off the ground again, because usually what we do, whenever it rains, we go get 
grass or mulches, we mulch again. We lift them a little bit, then we put them down. But if you don't do that, they end up rotting, you see? At the end of that day, you get poor yields. Even here, even when you're moving, it becomes hard. Like, my boys, when they are spraying, at the end of you find them when they are stepping on the stems, they are breaking. Correct information for many farmers may still be a challenge. However, crop experts at Bukola Chemical Industries are dedicated to offering the best information about crop care and management to ensure a bumper harvest. Um, tomatoes, just like any other crop, require a well-drained, fertile soil. Uh, the drainage is particularly important because uh, it it, it helps to already avoid some diseases uh, like bacterial wilt, which usually come later in stage. But it also ensures that uh, the crop roots can be able to uh, get water, nutrients, and to enable the crop to grow very well. Tomatoes are one of the crop vegetables, crop vegetable crops that uh, require being started from a nursery bed. Um, what we observe is that Tomatoes that have been started off from a nursery bed have better performance in the field. They actually grow way faster than tomatoes that have been planted directly. There's been a growing practice by farmers to directly uh, plant tomatoes in the main garden. But what we see is that such tomatoes uh, often get stunted or they don't grow as fast. Their growth, their vigor is not as good as those that have been started off in the nursery. In the main garden, of course, you must ensure that the garden has been prepared very well. We do primary tillage, we do secondary tillage to ensure that we have a, a very fine tilth, uh, which enables the seedlings, again, not to struggle as they try to establish in the main garden. Of course, lately we prefer that people grow crops in rows, one row to another. So usually tomatoes are planted within a spacing of about 3x3, three 3x4, by 4x3, three, three by four, four by or even 3x5, or 4x5, or 4x4, depending again on the variety, and also on the level of fertility of the soil. When your soils are too poor in terms of nutrients, we need you to use a bit wider spacing, because that means you need to give each plant a bit of uh, space. But to enhance the establishment, to ensure that your tomatoes are uh, established very well, on the evening of transplanting, you're supposed to water the nursery bed. Watering ensures that as you get the seedlings out of uh, the nursery, you minimize the damage that the soil, I mean the roots, are going to get. When the roots get, get damaged, they usually get wounds. As you pull them out, some get broken, so that creates a bit of wounds. So as you transplant them in the main garden, the wounds that have been created on the roots become entry points for some pathogens, and even pests such as nematodes. Uh, the most common of those, of course, given the nematodes, are also uh, diseases like Fusarium, and then another bacterial disease we call bacterial wilt. To have your tomato seedling established very fast and produce as many roots as possible, you could use products such as humet. Humet is a, is a natural substance that is usually produced uh, from decaying organic matter. Uh, the other products we, want, we usually want to use at that stage are biological products, so substances that prevent the wilts. So we have biological organisms, Pseudomonas fluorescens and Trichoderma viridae, in products like BioQRF, BioQRB, and a combination with bactericin, which we mix in the water and either drench after transplanting or water in the holes before we transplant. Uh, these microorganisms uh, work in a way of uh, releasing substances that are toxic to the bad guys, to the other ones that cause disease, but they also uh, outcompete the bad guys for space and for nutrients. The tomato garden must be kept weed-free at all times. Uh, 
very many ways of keeping your tomato garden weed free. One of those is uh, mulching. Uh, mulching suffocates the weeds but also enables uh, the soil to retain the water or the moisture. Uh, what is very important about weed management is some of these weeds we see growing in the tomato gardens uh, act as secondary hosts or act as uh, reservoirs for diseases and for insect pests. One of those very common insect pests that uh, uh, harbors in the, in the weeds are the thrips. Thrips, aphids, are so many others. There are about four different fertilizers that provide very good nutrition for your tomato uh, crop while in the main garden. The, the, this super green uh, fertilizer is an NPK 1010 10, 7.5 but also contains micronutrients. Um, it is a very rich fertilizer that enhances uh, vegetative growth. So the, the crop is able to grow uh, very fast, very green, and produces branches. Uh, these branches later definitely have a bearing on the yield. The, not, the more the branches you have, the more the tomatoes that you later on yield. When the crop is about to flower, that is about one week to flowering, we use a fertilizer called Agri-Gold. Agri-Gold is another very potent fertilizer with potassium uh, that enhances flowering. So you have bumper flowering, you have too many flowers uh, coming up on your tomato crop. Of course, we know that the more flowers you have, definitely the more fruits you're more likely to harvest. So after the use of Agri-Gold during the flowering stage, then your crop will start to fruit. The first flowers will start to bear fruits. During that period, we introduce yet another fertilizer we call Kara. It has been specifically formulated to enhance fruit fattening, to delay senescence of the crop, aging of the crop. Sometimes when your tomato uh, crop starts flowering or even fruiting, it begins to grow a little older. So if it grows older, it reduces the amount of time you will harvest from it. So Kara reduces senescence, it increases the life of your tomato plant as it fruits. What has been noted with Kara is that it also contains micronutrients that enhance the flavor. So you eat a tomato and it's the taste of a tomato, not something plastic. So that's what Kara gives you and it's supposed to be used during the period of uh, fruiting. So all the fertilizers we've mentioned and in the regime or the schedule of them, from super green to agri-gold to Kara, each is applied every after two weeks. So once you apply super green this week, two weeks after, you apply super green, super green again. So when they begin to flower, you introduce agri-gold. Every after two weeks. No, you can't mix them together. Each is used in a particular crop stage. So from super green to agri-gold to Kara, and you have a bumper harvest. For a good market season, about four size tomatoes will cost at 1,000 shillings compared to four sizable tomatoes going for 2,000 to 3,000 shillings in a dry season. For farmers, a sizable box would go for between 400,000 to 500,000 shillings on a good season. On average, on a weekly basis, with this variety, on a weekly basis, because the week harvest about two times, it can be Monday and, and, and Friday, or sometimes once, on a week, in a week, you can harvest about six or five boxes. That's how much novel yield. So the box was going for 280,000. Now for me, I still at farm gate price. I sold, uh, because now the, on the open market, they're a bit down. I was, I'm selling at 200,000, but still farm gate price. So I sell at 200, they go to the market, I don't know how much they sell. Yeah. Every well-prepared stew or sauce should never miss a tomato or two. That is why tomatoes will always fetch market starting in your own home. To make it even easier as an entrepreneur, Sandra tops it up with the use of social media to spread her market search. Market starts from your home, then your neighbors. Because me, I, sell, I now sell to my neighbors. Just not on a daily basis, people come, give us for 10,000, 5,000, 20,000, 30,000 just around my, my, my area. Then, these people take in boxes, because when these people who have small dollars, they come and pick from me on a daily basis. Uh, well, social media, uh, yeah, I've used it before. 
how it works, uh, well, depends on what you put there. Because at first I wasn't so, so active. When I started growing this, I knew I needed market. And just not market, but I needed to share my story to the young women there. But these people have said, are people are coming to my farm. I now train people, women, mainly young women, my age men, even those older women. They come to my garden and they, they are really impressed with what they find here. And uh, yeah, social media is really good. It has helped me, at least in that way. Me, I'm a slave farm. I slay in the garden. <laughs> For young people, as we sit around and wait for the government to help, Sandra's advice is to start now. However, for Uganda's agricultural sector to flourish and benefit Ugandans, government interventions such as training and funding for farmers is still a call waiting to be adhered to. So the young women, uh, there are so many myths about agriculture. Agriculture is for the old, I need land, I need a lot of space and stuff. Especially the slay queens. You can slay in the garden, just like me. Huh? Engage in agriculture. You may not have a big garden like me, but even with five, four plants, they can make a difference. So don't be afraid, you don't need a lot of money. People are going to discourage you. But first of all, know what you want. Have a dream, know what you want and focus on that.